Hello, it's Deborah from Attic Lane. I'm going to show you two things in this video. I'm going to show you how to make templates so that you can make pockets for your journals without having to re-measure them every time that you want to make them. So in this video I have three sizes. I have a large and a medium and a small and I'll show you how to make reusable templates and I will also show you then how you can decorate these pockets for your journals so that they have a very delicate uh, and a very soft background colour. You can then add anything else that you want to the top of these images but these will look as if you have cut these or printed these from a kit and you can, uh, you can take pride in the fact that this will be your own work. Because I don't like reinventing the wheel every time I uh, take up a project if I'm making something I think I'm going to make again, I will make a template for it. So what I've done is, um, um, if you want to check these measurements, you can freeze a picture here and you can get the measurements of this one. Um, and these have got less of the measurements because this is the one that everything is based on. So these two simply shrink this size here. So pause the video, make a note of those dimensions if you want to follow this exactly. And what I've done is I've cut these out and I've laminated them. Um, you know I use my laminator quite a lot, I find it very useful. And all I will do now is cut around these. So I'll leave a tiny little space to make sure that I don't break the seal. If I go too close then I'll lose that seal of the lamination sheet around the item that I want to make the template from. And I'll cut these out so that the next time I want to make um, a pocket for one of my journals or for a project, I've got this, I know the measurements, and I can simply draw a pencil line around it so it saves me having to measure everything out again. So I'm going to cut all of these out and then I'll show you all three um, on the mat. Here are my three templates now that they've been cut out. You can see uh, this is the largest, then there's a medium and a small. So let me show you how I use these on my plain paper. I'm using uh, a plain white 160 GSM paper. Um, this is ever so slightly thicker than copier paper and it's got a nice texture to it. So uh, I think it's got a nice tight weave and it takes ink very well. That's why I'm using this one. I'm going to set my template to the bottom edges of my white sheet of... It's not quite card. If I call it card or paper, um, it's only because I've uh, forgotten what I've referred to it as, but it is uh, 160 GSM plain white. You can see how much quicker you can work if you have a template ready and you just draw around it. I'm also going to explain why I've included my dotted lines. These are my fold lines. You might think, well, why would you put a fold line on a laminated uh, template if you're not going to be folding that template? It's because you can use these lines to show on the outside of your paper where you should be making your fold. And this will become apparent when I remove the template. So I've marked outside of my drawing of the template I've marked these lines. So I've got my vertical lines down the sides, I've got my horizontal line across the bottom. When I take my template away all I need to do to make my uh, life easier as far as my scoring goes is take my ruler and just draw, just join those lines up. And that means that I don't have to worry about wondering where I'm going to score my lines either because they will they will simply show me. All I need to do now is cut out that template. You'll also see on this that on my tab I've kept those uh, edges square. That means that I've got a good base to start from if I decide I want to maybe 
put a curve on those lines. Um, I found it easier just to keep those square edges rather than try and um, cut around or draw around a curved edge. This keeps everything nice and simple and there may be occasions when you don't want a curved edge. With my template cut out I've got pencil lines on this side so I'm going to use that to show me where to uh, I'm going to fold on the inside of those pencil lines. If you have one you could use a scoreboard. I have one. I don't always feel the need to use it. Because I'm folding inside and therefore hiding my pencil lines it doesn't matter if I get that absolutely spot on because the lines are hidden on the inside. And I think I will curve my edges so to do that, to help me do that, I'm just going to take my pencil again and I'm just going to do a little curve on the corner. And this won't be absolutely perfect, but that's fine. It's handmade and I quite like when it's a little bit um, on the wonk. I do quite a lot on the wonk. I like doing things by eye. Sometimes you need to measure, but if you don't need to measure, why would you? It's not engineering, it's paper crafting. Oh, that's not bad. Then I'll just take my rubber and remove those little pencil lines. Just make that corner a little bit better. There we go. So that's my pocket ready with my tab and I've got my edges, my little flaps, folded to the inside. I've drawn out the largest of my templates and if you want the tab to be on the opposite side to where it actually is, just turn your template the other way around, like that. So I'm now going to draw around this one very quickly to show you. And obviously I can't see my dotted lines to show me where my folds are, but that's okay. I can just turn it over and line it up with my reverse version and add in my dotted lines. And then I can join those up the same as I would have done if it had been the correct way around. And of course you can move the tab position on all of them just by turning them around. Now I'm going to show you how to create this decorated pocket. I'm going to show you how I laid down the colour and then how I got this really lovely soft effect of some writing and a couple of stamps, a ship and a shell here, uh, a writing stamp and then how I got these uh, little splatty uh, sort of brown splodges around the outside edge and then how to complete the whole effect and pull it all together by using uh, a particular colour to just tie everything together with a border on, uh, on these edges. So starting with your template, which you've cut out, I have put in my folds so that I know exactly where my pocket begins and ends. But for the purposes of this, I'm going to open those out. Now I'm working on a, a white piece of paper. I have got some yellow underneath. It's a hideous colour, but I think maybe that would be better for you to see um, the, the white of the pocket against the yellow of my protected background. I'm also using um, a brush. Now this is a, a sort of a fairly stiff brush. It's um, made by Nouveau. Um, I've had these, uh, I've got two or three of these and I've had these for a while. They're helpful for, for certain um, looks 
they they're not brilliant for or I haven't found that I, I can get brilliant smooth um, really nicely blended coverage but for other effects where you want to see a little bit of texture these bristles are absolutely perfect and I'm going to demonstrate that for you and I'm going to use two colours of Distress Oxide inks. My journal that I'm preparing these pockets for has got a travel theme, it's got a, a sea theme so these two colours lay down the most beautiful background. We're going to start with the antique linen and I'm going to roll my brush around and pick up lots of that um, paint and then, or ink I should say, and then I'm going to drag it across my pocket. I'm starting off the edge of the pocket, I'm starting up here because what I want to avoid is a splat of this colour arriving unexpectedly in the middle of my pocket. So if I drag this in from off the edge of the pocket it gives me a much more natural look and I'm just sweeping my brush backwards and forwards and what it's giving me is an effect of the ink being dragged across the pocket like sort of shot silk it's got some very lovely delicate light lines going across it I'm going to see if I can show you that difficult to pick up on the camera. You can see a little, little bit up here. Just lovely lines and it, it lays down a beautiful background. It'd be easier to see when we start layering with the blue. The blue that I'm using is tumbled glass. I love this colour. It's a beautiful light sea effect colour. It's like sea glass or something. It's really, really lovely. If you feel you've put too much, I'm going to do this deliberately. Uh, if you feel you've put too much blue on your brush and it's going to be too strong to sweep across your card, just take a little off in the lid. I do all kinds of things in the lids here. I, I put, um, if I'm using a, a foam dabber, I, I use this lid to keep my foam dabber in so that it doesn't make a mess on my um, my worktop space. I'm going to do the same with the blue and I'm going to start off the edge of the pocket and I'm going to drag it across and you need to do several layers of this before it will pick up enough for you to be able to see but when it does come in it's it creates a lovely textured look and because it reacts with the antique linen, some little areas of it look more greeny than blue. But because I'm doing a C effect, that's absolutely perfect. And I, I really, really like that. Sweep all the way across your pocket as well. Don't stop halfway across. Sweep all the way across to get this lovely shot silk look. I'm going to overemphasize this uh, a little. I'm going to layer on more color than perhaps I normally would or than I have for, um, for this pocket that I've already completed because I'm going to try and make it possible for you to see this on camera. Maybe you can see those little lines of colour now that it's been dragged across the whole pocket. I'm using two stamp sets. These are a couple that I've had for a time. I have a 49 and Market uh, Captured Adventures stamp set. This is um, a fabulous stamp set because it's got textures, uh, sorry, <laughs> textures. <laughs> And it's got lettering, um, and I, I really like this lettering. If you're if you're making cards, it's not always obvious to know how you would use a stamp like this. But if you're making journals, this stamp is perfect. And I have um, another stamp. This is from Marianne Designs, and it's called Eileen something. I can't read that. And I'm not going to try because uh, if I get it wrong it's going to sound dreadful. So this has got some lovely um, useful things, useful images as well. There's the ship, I'm using this image, the shell, 
the anchor and especially this image at the bottom here because this is a fabulous bit of text. Um, I'm also using uh, this one here that says cargo and it has a number underneath it. There are various other elements in this stamp, storm, beach, sea, sand, but the point of um, these pockets is to show you how to use um, textures and text as well as images on your pockets. The way that I got the lovely light effect. Now I, I, this is deliberate, this is very pale de deliberately. I've got a couple where I went in a little darker. This one is a little bit darker, this one here, but I want to show you how to get this lighter effect because for some projects this will be ideal um, and if you're if you're just used to using black ink I can show you a way to um, to soften the text and the image because you don't always want the text um, such as here to dominate. You want it just to be a background element. So I think when these are faded they look more like background elements and that's what I'm going to show you how to do. I use, I don't use black to do these, I use uh, a Versafine smoky grey. I use smoky grey a lot. I think it's very very versatile and even though it is paler than a normal black I'm still going to show you a way to damp it down. I'm going to begin with my ship so I'm going to ink that up and I'm going to, that's covered in ink, that's covered in my, my beautiful grey ink, but it's still going to be too strong. If I put that on now, it's going to be too dominant. So I'm going to do an impression and take off a lot of that ink and it knocks it back so that when you put down your second impression, it's very pale and it just, it just sinks into the background of your tag. And I think that's a lovely, lovely effect. I'm going to take my um, my text stamp as well. I've put all of these onto acrylic blocks ready to be used. I'm going to take off the top part of that stamp and add it onto my pocket and it's, it's just very very light again. It's very subtle. I can also add a little bit at the top. So I'm going to take ink up the bottom of the stamp, stamp and then take off the first impression and just run, I'll run it across all of the top I think. And the, the, tag, the pocket is really building up nicely now. I'm going to pop um, a little bit in the corner and you can do second and third impressions and again it's just, uh, it's just a nice soft colour. I think that's all that I need to stamp onto that and I'm going to use a texture stamp. So this is the one that came from the 49 and Market stamp set. It's, it's this one here. You could do this effect with a sponge if you've got um, a very loose uh, open sort of sponge. I don't know how to describe that. Something like a little kitchen scourer, you know, that sort of thing. You could you could do this as well, because that's what I used to use until I got um, a stamp that would do it for me. And I'm going to use that in brown, because this is going to look like brown spots of texture. I'm not going to knock this back. I'm not going to do a, a first, second, uh, not going to do this to it and, uh, and use a, a finer or um, a, f a more faded version of this. I'm just going to use it as is because I can control the depth of the ink that I'm adding because I'm using it by hand. I haven't stuck this on a block so if I if I want it to be light I just dab it very very lightly and gently. If I want it to be more intense I just lay it down longer and press harder. And this gives lovely little aging sort of spots on your pocket. It's a very delicate background and I say background because then this is a background you can you can add other things to this. I think I'm going to use these pockets as they are. To complete it I'm going to take one of my oral swabs. I have a whole load of these oral swabs. They're extremely cheap and they're very good uh, little foam on foam pads on sticks and I'm going to go around the outside edge of my pocket with the brown and because I've got those brown speckles from my texture stamp 
the brown around the outside just pulls everything together and gives it that vintage look. I like very much the way that the tumbled glass and the antique linen work so beautifully to create a tag that is very light and delicate in its colours and yet still has a vintage feel to it without being completely brown. I've gone around the outside so that's given the edges of my tag a nice border and I'm just going to add some stronger brown just in that top right corner I'm going to add a little bit in the bottom left corner it doesn't need this it's just an extra nice thing to do and maybe a tiny little bit up here and that's my tag finished our lovely pockets for our journals are now complete I hope you found the video useful. I hope you will uh, use these templates um, and I hope they will save you a great deal of work in, um, in measuring and, and double checking your, your sizes every single time that you, you want to make one of these pockets. And I hope that you found it useful to, to know how to put together uh, a very soft, uh, very delicate background. So as always, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for watching. And until we meet again, take care.